On this video, we're going to look at podcast equipment from start to end. Every single thing you need to record and produce a podcast. Let's get into it. So today I want to go into podcast equipment all the way through. So from the mics, to the mixers, to the recorders, to the software, the whole thing. I want to cover everything you need in terms of podcast gear to get your podcast made. So let's start at the start. The first thing that we always look at is this, the microphone. So microphones, there's a few different options here. So first things first, your choice is between XLR and USB microphones. So what's the difference between an XLR and a USB mic? Well, a USB mic, you probably know what USB is, USB plugs directly into your computer. So USB mics have the advantage that they're very easy to use. All you do is plug it into your PC, your Mac, and you can just start recording directly into the software. Now we'll get into a little bit more about that later. We'll go into the recording stuff in a wee while. So you can use recorders, computers, whatever it is. We'll go into that in a wee while. But suffice to say right now, USB mic makes it really easy to record directly into that computer or even into a smartphone or a tablet using a USB to say lightning or to USB-C adapter. So you can plug a USB mic into a smartphone for recording on the go as well. XLR, on the other hand, is professional recording grade connections. So you get these three pin connectors in the bottom. Hopefully you can see that okay there. It's a larger connection, quite big and round. Oh, I've got one here, haven't I? So ugh, here's a USB cable, quite big thick end, three pins on the end. Well, that one has three holes, I should say. The mic itself has three pins and that plugs in and that is XLR. Uh, what that stands for? Absolutely no idea. All I know is that it's kind of pro level audio kit. So if you want to use really pro level stuff like mixers, that kind of thing, you're looking at XLR. For me, the difference is uh, we usually say to people, try and keep it as simple as possible in the early days. And for me, that's USB. Just go with a good USB mic. If you think you will be working with mixers, with digital recorders, with really sort of pro kit later, maybe it's worth investing in XLR in the early days, but usually start with USB and you can move to XLR in the future. The benefit is that there is one mic which we recommend, looks very much like this, handheld mic, I don't have one to hand right now, but the Samson Q2U. The Samson Q2U has both. It's got XLR in the bottom, but it also has USB. So that's why we tend to recommend the Samson Q2U more than anything else, because it has that flexibility that you can plug it right into your computer, into your mobile device, but you also have the option to put it into a mixer or a digital recorder, something like that. So it's really flexible. It grows with you as you expand your gear. Samson Q2U, generally the first option I always recommend to any new podcasters. The alternative being the ATR2100. So the ATR2100, very similar, very, very similar mic, same options, looks pretty much the same, has the same stuff in the bottom. So that's another option there. But I hope that explains to you the difference between XLR and USB to start with. Helps you choose between the two. The other option you've got is dynamic versus condenser. So a dynamic mic versus a condenser mic. The difference here is really it's about how sensitive the mic is and what kind of devices it works with. So condenser mics need power. Condenser mics need to be powered. It's called phantom power. So you need to actually put power, electricity into a condenser mic to make it work. Just the way the internals work, it needs that power. Whereas a dynamic mic doesn't need power at all. But the consequence is that it's less sensitive. So you can still get just as good quality. So both of them can be really top quality. It's just about the kind of context in which you're recording in. So condenser mics are very sensitive, great for recording in really good recording environments. So I'm here in the studio, well sound treated, very silent. Therefore, a condenser mic is good for that, like this one. It doesn't pick up the background noise uh, because there isn't any background noise. There's not much to pick up around it. And the condenser mic, because it's more sensitive, it's just deeper. It's like it's a more resonant sound. It picks up more of the range. Therefore, it gets the most out of your voice. 
Although saying that, everyone's voice is different. Everyone kind of, you know, if you test out a bunch of mics, you'll find that this mic makes your voice sound better, but this other mic makes your friend's voice sound better. So it's never a one size fits all, but in general, a condenser mic will get more from your voice. It'll be a deeper, richer sound. But the downside, like I said, picks up more background noise, more sensitive to creaking chairs, jingling keys, rustling clothes, that kind of stuff. Okay, so condenser mics only really tend to be useful or good for podcasters if you have a really good, dedicated, treated recording space, kind of like where I am right now. The alternative is a dynamic mic. So you get a few different types of dynamic mics. Uh, to go with the condenser, this is uh, Electro Voice. So Electro Voice condenser mic, really good quality condenser mic. Whereas the uh, Rode Procaster over there on the other side of the room here is what we use normally as well. And that is a dynamic mic. So it doesn't pick up as much. This as well, this is a Shure SM58, a dynamic mic. So dynamic, it means that this is great for taking out and about less sensitive, doesn't need power, more flexible, doesn't pick up the background noise as well, but you still get a decent sound. It still sounds great. So you talk away on this, it's still a good voice sound. You can still get plenty of richness, all that stuff. This, a dynamic mic, just like the uh, Samsung Q2U that I described earlier, dynamic as well, tends to be better for your average podcaster because you won't have a dedicated recording space, most likely. You'll have maybe a bit of background noise like traffic out the window or, um, you know, a fan running or the computer. Even just a computer running in the background can be picked up by, a, you know, a, a really sensitive condenser mic. So that's the difference. If you're out and about, if you are recording in just a normal bedroom, office, whatever that might be, dynamic is probably almost certainly best for you. So again, go with the Q2U, go with a, a Shure SM58 if you want to upgrade the, uh, the quality, or if you want to put it on a boom stand really easily, uh, a mic that looks just like this. In fact, I've got one right in front of me, the uh, Rode Procaster. So the Rode Procaster, another dynamic mic with a pop filter built in as well, actually. So great wee mics, these. So that is XLR versus, no, sorry, that is dynamic versus condenser. Um, and I've given you a few recommendations in there. So again, just to summarize, generally the Samsung Q2U ticks all those boxes. Keep it simple in the early days, Samsung Q2U. Dynamic mic for your average podcaster, again, the Q2U. Similarly, the Procaster XLR, but the, Pro, the Rode Podcaster is a good USB alternative if you want to up that quality a bit. So you want to step up a bit from the Samsung Q2U quality to a mic that looks very much like this, very similar quality, the Rode Podcaster comes in around $100, uh, sorry, £100, maybe $150 or so. So not the cheapest in the world, but quality is great. Now, one other thing to mention in terms of microphones, another type that I've not covered yet are lavalier mics. So a lavalier mic is a tie clip mic, a lapel mic. They come by a whole bunch of names, but it's a little microphone like this which just clips onto your shirt. If I can untangle this one, I'll show you. So you could put it onto your shirt like this, and then I plug that into whatever I want it to plug into. I can plug that into a digital recorder, into my smartphone. That's the usual use case for this particular one. So this is the Smart Lav, the Rode Smart Lav Plus. Great little mic. I use this all the time still, because all it does is plugs right into your phone into the bottom, don't have my phone with me, but you plug it into the microphone, uh, the headphone socket in the bottom of the, of the uh, smartphone. Smart Lav goes in there and it acts as a microphone then for your smartphone. And you can use it to record directly into the dictaphone or using a tool, a, a mobile recording app, like uh, any, of the, any of the standard recording apps, but also the double ender type tools like Ringer. So Ringer has a great mobile recording app that you can plug in a Smart Lav and get really good quality straight into a ringer. So lapel mics, lavalier mics are another option as well. And certainly I would recommend the Rode Smart Lav Plus if it's for your smartphone. Really good quality, about £50, $50 or so per unit. You can add a second one to that with the SC6 adapter. I've got one in here. The SC6 adapter is a little device, plugs into the bottom of your smartphone, 
again, uh, takes two microphones, so two lavalier mics can plug in here. And then you can put one on your interviewee and one on yourself. And that gives you, you know, great recording quality with both people. And you can just put your smartphone in the middle. So flexible, you can carry that around so easily. Just a little bag like this. So that is another option for you. If you're wanting a non-smartphone lavalier mic, loads of options out there. One we've used is the ATR 3350. So Audio-Technica 3350. A wee bit noisy, but it's cheap. It's only £30 or so. Uh, so you can forgive it. And once you're jumping up, uh, lavalier mics are one of those things that it tends to go from zero to they're binary. They're either quite cheap or very expensive. So you jump up and you go over £100 right away. But that is the other option, lavalier mics as well. And recording into your smartphone is a great option. Talking of which, let's move on from mics to recorders. So there's three options here if you're recording your podcast. You've got digital recorders. So what I'm recording into right now, uh, a few different options here. You've got little ones like a dictaphone, little Sony dictaphone uh, comes with USB, plug it straight in. This can take an external mic, so you could plug a lavalier mic into this. Not a smartphone one, funny that, in that these have a different type of connector called a TRRS, goes into your smartphone, and you need just a TRS. So it's one with just one of the little, uh, sorry, two of the little stripes here, and that'll work with one of these. You get adapters, but anyway, suffice to say, uh, you need just a normal lavalier mic and go into one of these. So fine with one of them or kind of more pro level kit, which is the, the Zoom H6, for example. Brilliant device this. It can take four XLR mics. So you can plug in four people, four Samsung Q2Us, for example, or four Shure SM58s. And you can record four people around a table. Great quality, professional quality recording. Good control over each one. You can go levels for each one. Loads of tools in here, like limiting, like all sorts of compression tools like that. Loads of things in here that almost make it act like a mixing desk while you're out recording. So if you're on the go, you're out and about recording stuff at events, things like that quite often. Something like the H6 is great, but it's expensive. A couple of hundred quid, a few hundred dollars at least. Maybe if you're just recording on your own, a little dictaphone like this is a better option. So that's one option, digital recorder. Uh, I mentioned phone. I've mentioned your phone already a bunch of times. So mobile phones, mobile smartphones. Uh, do you get anything else? <laughs> Non-mobile smartphones? But yeah, your smartphone is a great recording device. You can plug in that lavalier mic. Um, do you know, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because the quality isn't amazing, but a good smartphone, like an iPhone or a good one of the top uh, higher range Samsungs, the mic in the bottom of that is actually really good. You can hold the phone up in front of you as a microphone and you don't get bad quality. It's not great, but it suffices. If you're starting out, if you just want to get your podcast out there into the world, again, better to just get it out there. Minimal quality, um, a minimum level of quality, I should say, and good enough, smartphone will do it. But you can plug in your uh, lavalier mic as well and record straight into the phone software. <clears throat> so that's an option. Right, and the last one here is computer. So recording device, you can record into your computer as well, obviously. So like I said, USB mic, plug that USB mic into your laptop, into your desktop, and you can record directly into software on your computer. Now, in terms of the software, we'll go into that a bit more in depth um, with the software, but things like Audacity, great for recording, pretty simple stuff. Uh, we use Audition, Adobe Audition, a bit more expensive, obviously, but plenty of options for recording into your computer. Even, uh, I'm pretty sure both PCs and Macs come default with a voice recorder app in there. So that's an option as well, just record directly into your computer. Um, many people, obviously, are recording uh, with tools like uh, Skype, like Zoom. You know, they're recording an online call, an online interview. In that case, you have your USB mic plugged into your computer. You're using a bit of software like uh, Ecamm for Mac, like uh, Talk Helper um, uh, for Talk Helper. That's not the right name, is it? <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, talk, I think it's Talk Helper. I'll link it in the description anyway, the PC version of that. It used to be Pamela, but Pamela died 
by I'm kind of, I can't remember the new one, but um, there's PC versions for recording Skype calls. Uh, Zoom, zoom.us, great little tool for just running a call and recording it directly too. Um, and then you've got the double ender tools like Ringer, like Zencaster, like Squadcast, like clearcast.io, a bunch of them too. Um, and I'll link to them in the description as well. So look down in the description um, if you want to see the exact details of them. Uh, so they are all the places you'd record into on your computer. Okay, so that's recorders, how you actually record from that mic into wherever it is you're going to store the voice. Now, something that most people won't be using, it's overkill for most podcasters, I would argue, is a mixer. But some people are desperate to use them because they have all the options, you want all the... Uh, all the knobs and buttons and faders and all that kind of stuff. Um, and let's have a look at one. So I've got one right in front of me. We'll have a quick look at why you might want to use a recorder. So this is the Rode Caster. So the Rodecaster is a newer mixer that's come out recently. Uh, it's got a few, it's designed for podcasters, which is great. Um, it's got really high quality. It's quite expensive. So not necessarily the best example if you do want to get into mixers because you need to be able to afford it. It's about $600, I believe. Um, but it's got faders, really high quality kit here. You've got lots of... Um, the buttons are just so lovely. They light up when you press them, just really high quality. You've got a soundboard over here as well. So you can load in sounds into each one of these. So you could load in your theme music in one, you could load a sound effect into the other um, and then play them during the recording. And they've also got a big red record button up here. So this is a unique mixer in that you can record directly into the mixer. Normally with a mixer, you need to output from the mixer. The mixer just takes the mic inputs. So you input from the mic um, or uh, an iPad, a smartphone, whatever that might be, and then you output that to a digital recorder like the Zoom H6 we just looked at. That's why a mixer is usually that man in the middle that takes all the inputs, mixes them all together, hence mixer, makes it sound good. You can set the volumes, compression, uh, EQ, all that kind of stuff, and then it sends it off to the recording device. So there's usually three parts, the mic, the mixer, the recorder. But with something like the Rodecaster and a few other mixers out there, to be fair, this can record directly onto a memory card slot right here, micro SD memory card. So great little device, plug in the XLR mics in the top here. Uh, anything else about this? It takes Bluetooth, which is really interesting. So you can connect your phone up to it. You can record calls uh, from your phone uh, directly via the Bluetooth as well. Um, so the reason for using a mixer, so the only reason, oh, actually, sorry, just to finish off, the Yamaha MG10 is what I'm recording into right now. So that's our kind of workhorse mixer in the studio here. Um, the Yamaha MG10, it's not USB, uh, sorry, yeah, the Rode, Rodecaster is USB, so it can plug directly into your computer as well. The MG10, Yamaha MG10, great little mixer, way cheaper, so £100-ish, $150 or so, uh, a bit less complex, still got um, all the options really that you need in terms of it can do mix minus, that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's a great option, really low noise as well, so great quality mixer. So why would you choose a mixer? Well, there's a few reasons. So first of all, the pro quality kit. So if you're wanting to use XLR microphones uh, or any other inputs that use XLR, then you, a mixer is a good option. Like I said, you can use it with the higher end recorders like the Zoom H6, the Zoom H5, um, plenty of the uh, Marantz recorders as well, that kind of stuff, uh, Tascam. Uh, then you can use them with XLR too, but a mixer is a good way to bring together a few different inputs that are all XLR. So if you want to use that pro quality kit, a mixer can be a good option. The other option is really if you want to do live production. So this is a tricky one because a lot of people think they'd like to do live production, but actually it turns out too tricky to do in the end. By live production, what I mean is being able to bring in everything all at once, treat it like it's a radio show. So it means you can plug in your smartphone, play your music, your sound effects directly into the show. So you and all your co-hosts can hear the music being played. You can get amped up with your theme music playing at the very start. You can play some sound effects, you know, silly stuff in the middle. Uh, you can play a listener call in or something like that directly in from your computer or from your smartphone. Um, and you can mix that all in using the mixer 
during the recording. So that's one reason to use a mixer. The, the benefit of that obviously is that there's less editing. So you don't have to edit afterwards because everything's already mixed in. So it's possible once you get good at it to just hit record, to mix all your music in, all your listener call-ins, that kind of stuff into the show as you record, press stop, and there's no editing needed. All you need to do is make sure your kind of your levels are right. Maybe do a bit of processing, but you don't need to do any editing. You don't need to bring in the music and all the extra bits. So there is a benefit there from having a mixer. The final one, arguably less important these days, but it's a bit of reliability. You know, if you're recording into your computer, software can crash. Um, they're just they're more prone to dying on you. Um, whereas if you're using dedicated audio gear, like I am right now, I'm recording into this XLR mic, into our Yamaha MG, MG10 mixer, into a Zoom H10, H10? <laughs> a Zoom H5 digital recorder. All three of them are just designed for audio. They're bomb proof. They just, I've never seen any of them crash or anything like that. It just works. So if you have an important interview, you're never going to lose a bit of it. It's just going to work. And that's what mixers, good quality digital recorders, that's what they're good at. But you pay for it. You pay for it in cost, uh, as in it's much more expensive. And you also pay for it in time because it's more complex. It takes longer to get set up. There's more likely that something will be off, a cable will break or a setting's not quite right. And it'll take you a while to fix that. So make sure that you're up for the extra time that that involves. Okay, that's mixers. Um, just a couple other recommendations there. You've got the Rodecaster, which is very high-end cost-wise. You've got the Yamaha MG10, which is probably the entry level, the bottom level I'd recommend you jumped in at with a mixer. If you want to go in between that, the Behringer have a range of mixers. The lower-end ones, not great, quite noisy. Um, they're fine to play around with, but the, no the audio quality is not brilliant. Uh, the bottom level of Xenix that I think, the bottom level Behringer, I would say, that's worth getting into, and even this is iffy, is the um, the Xenix 1204. It's probably it's probably the cheapest Behringer that I would say is decent quality. So that's the Behringer Xenix 1204. And then you've got, jumping up from that though, you've got the other brand that's really reliable. If you want to get a mixer that you know is going to be good quality, reliable, other than that Yamaha MG10 I talked about, you've got the, uh, the Mackie. Mackie range, Mackie make great mixers and they've got the Pro FX8 and that's a great mixer for bringing in a bunch of different inputs, loads of different options, everything you'd need. Okay, so the final bit of gear, actually there's two, there's two bits of gear I want to finish up with, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of accessories almost, but whenever you're recording, and I'm not right now because I'm on video, but whenever you're recording just audio, you want to be monitoring your audio, okay? So you want to be making sure you sound good, there's no bad background noises, and that comes with headphones. So good pair of headphones is essential for recording decent audio. Now, there's a few different options here. Uh, right in front of me here, I've got the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros. Now, these are kind of, these are industry standard, the type of ones you get in a radio studio. So these are steep, like a couple of hundred pounds. Um, they're amazing, such good quality, really well noise isolated, very comfortable as well. Um, although it's lovely, the, the, the wee spongy ear pieces tend to pick up a person's uh, aroma. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, Matthew in the studio here. He wears these more than I do. So whenever I put these on, all I do is smell Matthew, which is lovely. But anyway, uh, aside from that disgusting little side note, uh, the DT770s, if you can use them just yourself, are great headphones and if you can afford them. Um, the other option is, uh, so there's the Sony, and I always have to write this down because it's uh, uh, the code, Sony MDR7506. Sony MDR7506. They're a great set of headphones as well, much lower price in the, um, I believe last time I looked, somewhere in the 50 to 100 mark. Uh, but they're great. They're monitors, which means that if you're looking for monitor headphones, you're looking for that word, that word monitor or studio phones or something like that. And that means that they don't have, um, they don't do anything to the audio because otherwise, uh, you'll have your standard kind of consumer grade headphones. They might add a bit of bass. They, you know, you often get on the headphone package, you'll see adds bass or great bass response and stuff like that. You don't want that. You want it to sound exactly as it was recorded. And that's what monitors means. Monitors 
give you the sound exactly as they're recorded. Okay, so you've got the Sony's, you've got the Bayer Dynamics, and you've got a bunch in between. I mean, um, when it comes to monitors, uh, as long as you can see a good reputation, if it's a good brand, if there's some decent reviews on it on Amazon or wherever, you can't go too far wrong. So just choose something that fits your budget, as long as it says monitor or studio phones on it. Um, the last thing I want to quickly mention was this. So mic stands. So boom stands. A boom stand is great. It means that you can move it around really easily. You can, <laughs> you can just push it out of the way when you don't want to record. So a boom stand clamps to your table. It moves around really simply. Um, it doesn't take up much space. It means you can push your mic out of the way. Have it always set up but just be able to push it out of the way when you're not using it. I love a good boom stand. You get cheaper ones from uh, Neuer, so N-E-E-W-E-R. Uh, don't cost very much and decent. Not the greatest quality in the world, but we've had a few of them that have lasted for quite a long time. Uh, and then you've got the Rode PSA-1s, which is the one I'm using here. Can hold a much heavier mic, the Rode PSA-1, just more nice and smooth and manoeuvrable and a longer reach as well if you need that to reach from the back of a desk. So boom stands are great as well. Um, we've got reviews of all the these things, obviously. So we've got a headphone roundup. We've got boom stand roundup all on the website. Just go to thepodcasthost.com forward slash equipment and you'll find all of our equipment gear. Last thing I want to cover was software. So recording, editing, that's the final step. Well, recording is not the final step. Editing is the final step. And you'll use the same software generally for uh, editing as you will for recording, presuming you're recording into your computer. But anyway, you need the editing. Even if you're recording into you know, a call recording app or into your smartphone, you still need editing software to finish it all up. The best option still, well, not the best option, but the free option, <laughs> the most common option still is Audacity. Audacity is free, it's decent, it's a wee bit clunky these days, it looks looking a bit out of date, but it does everything you need. If you're willing to spend the time to learn it, by all means, use Audacity. If you do want to learn it, obviously we have a full set of courses on Audacity in our Podcast Host Academy. Just go over to thepodcasthost.com forward slash academy and you'll find it there. Um, and you can find yeah, all of our courses in there. So if you can learn it, you can figure it out, you can use Audacity for it. The other option there actually is our own podcast maker app, Alitu. So Alitu, A-L-I-T-U dot com. You can record directly into it if it's solo or you can upload uh, an interview, a co-hosted recording straight to us. We then do the processing for you. So we'll make it sound good, uh, we'll level out all the volumes, we'll do a bit of noise reduction, we'll do all that stuff to make sure the audio sounds good. And then you can use Alitu's editing interface. So we've got an editing interface custom to podcasting to make it really easy to do all the jobs that podcasters usually have to do, just cut out mistakes, the silences, that kind of stuff. So Alitu can do that for you and then it'll help you actually piece together your episode, publish it, it even links off to a lot of the publish, uh, the podcast hosting platforms too. It takes away a lot of the tech stress. Other software we use for more complex jobs, so if you do need to do a lot more editing, bring in multiple tracks, all that kind of stuff, we use Adobe Audition more than anything else. We're in Adobe House here, so when we're working with client shows, with our own shows, um, if it's a complex one, if it's an easy, simple interview, that kind of stuff, I use Alitu myself, but if it's more complex, if it needs like three or four layers, a lot of background music, that kind of stuff, then uh, we use Adobe Audition. So Adobe Audition, great package. You can see again a comparison on our website there around Adobe Audition versus Audacity versus some other uh, software options there too. So look in the description, there'll be a link to that for you there too. Okay, that's software. So that kind of ties up pretty much all of the equipment that I want to go through. So we've got the mics, we've got the recorders, we've got the mixers, then that's the three main parts of it. Then we've got the add-ons, you've got the headphones, you've got the boom stands, you've got the software. And that's everything to do with podcast equipment. I want to leave you with one thing though. We love podcast equipment. I love messing around with this stuff. I'm horrendously geeky when it comes to this, which is why we've got so much stuff lying about, why we've tested so much of it, why it's all on the website. Again, go over to thepodcasthost.com forward slash equipment 
and you'll find all of the reviews we've done, all of the roundups we've done, everything around podcast equipment, everything you need to know are in the gear you use to record a podcast. But having said that, keeping that in mind, equipment is a means to an end, okay? So again, I mentioned at the start, keep it as simple as you can because Equipment really is just a tool to record great content. The important part is the content itself. Spend as much time on actually planning the content, on getting good at delivering that content, you know, presentation skills, your speaking style, finding your own voice, your personality, all that stuff. That is the important part. Choose the simplest possible equipment with decent quality that fits your style and then spend as much more time as you can on actually planning and delivering the content itself. But having said that, gear's cool, gear's fun, it's shiny, it's the good stuff. So (laughs) again, if you want any more about podcast equipment, pop over to thepodcasthost.com forward slash equipment uh, and you'll find all of our recommendations. And actually you can see on there as well the full setup, all the stuff that we use. If you go to thepodcasthost.com, pop to the top navigation Go in there and you'll see the gear we use. You'll see it up there. It's under the buying guides uh, option. Okay, thank you very much for following along. I know this is a a longer video than usual. So if you've got to the end, please do leave me a comment and let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, anything that you use. You know, I'd love to hear what kit, what gear, what equipment you use in your own podcasting. It'd be great to hear that. All right. Thank you very much again for listening. Please do check out the Podcast Host Academy and Alitu.com. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.